There is so much to speak about in this very short gospel passage. This is chapter 14 of John's gospel, verses 27 to 31. And so it's a little clip of the Last Supper discourse. The Last Supper in John's gospel begins with chapter 13 and ends with chapter 16. And then chapter 17 is the longest prayer we have of Jesus. It's an entire chapter long. And so really we've kind of plucked out this gospel today from the long discourse our Lord has with the apostles on the night before he dies. And so it'd be good to sit back and actually read this in whole from chapters 13 to 16 to reflect upon it slowly and try to see it as that long conversation that Jesus is having with the apostles about what's to come. This opening line today, perhaps we'll just focus on this opening line. Because we repeat it every day at Mass. If you caught the words, uh, you'd pick up that the priest, after we say the Our Father prayer, he says a little thing to the Father, and then the priest turns to the Eucharist and says, Jesus, you said to us, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. And then after that, normally you were told to extend to each other the sign of peace, but we don't do that during COVID. So there is this thing here where the first part, that during every Mass, the priest speaks to Jesus. One of the few times at Mass, the priest speaks to Jesus and asks him to give us that peace that he promised us. What is peace? Is it simply the absence of war? Right? Do we really have peace with North Korea right now because there's an absence of war? He's not firing missiles, and so is there peace? We could say, well, there's a kind of peace. Maybe there's a uh, absence of physical conflict, but there certainly is verbal conflict still going on. We can say for the same for Iran and other countries where our country is not fully at peace with them. There may be a lack of conflict, but there's not peace. We think about relationships that we have, friendships that we may have, and we could say, well, we're somewhat at peace with them. There's an absence of conflict with them, but there's really not truly a deep inner peace. When we speak of that deep inner peace, we speak about an accord, a oneness, a lack of discord, a unity with the other. Uh, There is no block between the two, and there's truly real peace. The peace that our Lord comes to give us is not merely the absence of conflict or simply just kind of getting along or just simply tolerating one another, which the world seems to be the only form of peace there is, which really isn't working because the Lord never said to tolerate each other as he tolerated us. He tells us to love one another. But the the words of our Lord here, the peace he comes to give ultimately is that intimate relationship with his Father to take away all discord between us and God, to offer himself in sacrifice, to take away the sins of the world, to make reparation for our sins so that we can live in accord with the Father. Now that living in accord with God doesn't just mean the absence of conflict with God. It means of coming into an accord with the Father. We've been given the grace by the gift of the Holy Spirit, by the outpouring of his grace, we have been given the gift to be able to bring our minds in accord with the mind of God. We were given the beautiful gifts of wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding. These four gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to our intellect so that our minds can be brought into an intimate union with the way God thinks, to understand how God understands it to proceed as God would want us to proceed with true wisdom, to be able to act in that virtue of prudence and temperance when acting, because our minds would be in accord with that of God. And then we could say that our will also needs to be in accord with God. We all know when two people get together to do do something, there's a conflict of will at times. Right, Because one wants one thing, one wants the other thing, and a little conflict might be something small or little. It could be no big deal, or it could be tremendous, the conflict that's there. Right, So conflict comes ultimately from the 
a refusal of the, the fighting of wills, right? So to receive that absence of conflict with God, to come into accord with God, is to allow our wills to be conformed to his will. The more we fight God, the less peace we have in our lives. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ offers himself for us, rises from the dead, gives us the gift of the Spirit, and to the gift of our will he gives the gift of fortitude, the strength to actually choose God above other things that would bring us into discord with him. God gives us every grace to conquer every sin in our life or anything that can bring us out of accord with him so we can stay one with him, in accord with him. If you notice, Jesus is always praying for us to have unity with him. He's always inviting us to be one with him. He's always inviting us to have that true peace where we think and act with him so that we can truly have the true interior, deeper peace in our hearts. And finally, we all know that relationship takes more than just thinking and acting. It takes loving. It takes loving. To bring our hearts in accord with the heart of God. To love as God loves. To love what God loves. To despise what God despises. God despises sin. Not sinners, sin. He despises sin. He loves the sinner, but despises sin. Because it brings that discord. It brings us away from him. It separates from him. Sin is the opposite of love. It's selfishness, self-centeredness. Sin takes us away from the true desire of God, which is for unity with us. And so in the gift of the Holy Spirit, he gives us the beautiful gifts of piety and fear of the Lord. These two beautiful gifts to the heart. So that the heart can begin to love as God loves to love what God loves, to approach each other with that same love that God has for us, to turn to the Lord and to love him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this is what truly brings peace to the soul. When the mind is living in accord with the mind of God, when the will is in accord with the will of God, and when the heart is in accord with the heart of God, then we find that true peace, that fruit of the Holy Spirit of peace comes to bear, uh, to, comes to maturity within our hearts. And when we have that unity, our hearts aren't troubled or afraid because they're in accord with God himself. So today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to take time and really enter into prayer to ask the Lord, you know, where in my mind and my thoughts Where are my thoughts are in discord with you? Where is my will in discord? Where is my heart in discord? And bring me into accord, Lord, so that I may think with you, that I may will with you, that I may love with you. May God bless you and Mary keep.